Today I want to take a look at how Bungie once continued a great narrative in the past, and how they can learn from their past successes for the future of Seasons in Destiny 2. The story of Malak is one of my favorites, and I thought we'd take a brief look back at his story, and then discuss what made it a great addition to the narrative after. Before the Malak we know today as this giant taken knight with a jelly head, Malak started out as just some lowly thrall. A thrall that was spawned from Oryx's sister, Savathun. Now Savathun's intentions were to use this thrall to infiltrate Oryx's army and steal tithes from the Taken King himself. With these stolen tithes, Savathun would be able to fuel her own strength, but the thrall had other plans. Malak would instead hide himself from Savathun and keep the tithes for himself, allowing for him to become stronger and stronger until eventually growing into a knight. Oryx took notice of this extremely rapid rise in strength and confronted Malak directly. Malak, cunning Malak, sly and slippery. Savathun begat you to betray me to poison slowly. Gnaw from within, liar Malak. You are meant to tithe upon Oryx to feed your maker with secret blight. Your secret is two lies. You betrayed your maker, your mother. You hid yourself from Savathun. The tithing does not reach her jaws. Your thrall strength is now acolyte strength. Your acolyte strength is now knight strength. Your thieving pride is known and fed. Malak, I took you from your mother, my sister. Your shape is new. This shape is poison. The shape of secrets. I name you Malak, which means my poison. A prize to taunt Sister Savathun. Steal now for me. So Oryx takes Malak, proving Savathun's plan really backfired. Malak, while taken, was still actually able to retain some of his own will. Malak was able to control Taken Blights at his own will and empower them at his command, becoming formidable enough to take claim of the Osmium Throne. See, after we defeated Oryx, the throne was left vacant, leaving Malak as a perfect contender to seize control of the Taken, and essentially become the next Taken King. The would-be King Malak had been working to perfect his dark sorcery, and both Varix and Eris pick up on the whispers of Malak's hunger for power. And this is where we come into the story. Varix sends us to the Dreadnought to investigate the whispers of Malak. Oryx is dead, taken, unleashed. Many seek to claim the throne. Taken power strong here. New leader rises. He hungers for Oryx's power. One taken king was enough, thank you. We fight through Hive and Taken on the Dreadnought until Malak makes his appearance. He is close. We continue to push back Malak and the Taken, which causes Malak to flee the Dreadnought. And when he teleports, he leaves behind echoes that can trace his location. We learn from these echoes that Malak has fled to the moon in a familiar place, the Shrine of Oryx. Eris tells us that it's foolish to think we can capture Malak, and instead she tells us we must destroy him. The Taken King is dead, yet still his armies writhe and claw at our worlds. Even as you led the assault on the Dreadnought, a powerful Taken war beast fled for the safety of the Shrine to Oryx. The would-be Prince Malak works to perfect a dark sorcery. He must be destroyed. Light, Guardian. Locke's power is absolute here. The Blight is the black goo, right? What is that stuff anyway? Darkness. 
given form by Malak's cruel will. Guardian, the blight will drain your strength, your speed. held back the darkness, though the gods and princes of the Hive hunger for our light. This is our charge, Guardian. This is our light. When Malak is finally slain, the Taken Blights are lifted, and Oryx's shrine remains quiet once again. It's like they say, pride goeth before the fall. When we return to Varix, he rewards us with a Taken sword known as Dreadfang, and the flavor text reads, Kingly brother, I thank you for the gift of your failure. The sword logic demands a pinnacle. And that is the story of the short-lived, infamous Taken Knight Malak. I really think Bungie did a few great things with this story and quest. With the release of the Malak quest and storyline, the narrative both in-game and in the lore made clear connections to the Taken King. They did a great job presenting the story in the game as we've created a power vacuum by destroying Oryx. Now there are others who seek his throne. We need to stop Malak before he becomes the next Taken King. It was definitely connected both in-game and the lore, and was a continuation of the Taken King story and really felt believable in the universe. It didn't feel disjointed and only connected very loosely like the recent seasons of Destiny 2. To go from Shadowkeep with the moon, darkness, and pyramid ship theme, then back to Osiris and Sate 14 in the next season, and now back to more Red War and Almighty storylines, it just feels so disconnected. Whether they are connected behind the scenes in the lore is one thing, but they surely don't feel connected in the game. If future season pass content had something like the Malak quest and a strike that pertained to the prior season, then the quote from Bungie, We want to make sure we're actually threading a narrative that players can follow starting in Shadowkeep, would make a little bit more sense. Imagine if in Shadowkeep we actually encounter something related to the story of the expansion. Maybe similar to Malak, have us complete a quest that ends with a strike inside the pyramid ship where we encounter something born of the darkness. Or maybe we have more places to explore on the Black Garden instead of just ditching the whole zone after the raid. But instead we get Season of Dawn and Season of Worthy that while Bungie says they're connected in the background, feel completely disconnected from the narrative in-game. Especially if you don't read any of the lore, these many episodes feel so pointless to the narrative. I think in the future Bungie should look to create seasons with content similar to the April update in Destiny 1 where we really continued the narrative and the theme that was set up in the expansion. Because again, in Destiny 2 these seasons feel so loosely connected in their stories. But as always, those are just my thoughts. Feel free to disagree, let me know what you guys think, 
What do you hope for for seasonal content in Destiny 2? More connected narratives? Less frequency of seasons? Or do you just want to see them remove seasons altogether and just release expansions every six months or something? Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.